I'm Denton Davidson for Gold Derby here with Jonathan Majors, who stars in Devotion, an inspirational true story about a pair of US Navy fighter pilots who risked their lives during the Korean War and become some of the Navy's most celebrated wingmen. Jonathan, you played Jesse Brown, who is a true American hero. He broke down a lot of barriers. He's the only black person in Naval flight officer training at the time. This is the 1940s. I'd never heard of him before, and that's why films like this are so important. I'm curious if you had heard of him and what were your first thoughts when you were offered this role? Well, I hadn't heard of him uh, until I read the script. And when I read the script, um, I, I just I was just bowled over by how um, just how heroic he was, you know, um, in battle and and outside of battle. I mean, this is pre MLK pre Malcolm X, you know, the civil rights movement is is needed, but not anywhere close to um, beginning, you know, in that way. And so um, he was a uh, he was a true maverick, you know, a, a true trailblazer. And um, there are some there's some correlations and connections between us, you know, uh, the fact that he was from Mississippi and, you know, though Mississippi and Texas, where I'm from, are not, you know, the same place in any way, but uh, there's a certain mentality, you know, um, with uh, the communities that we we both grew up in, and um, he was just so heroic, you know, what he's done and and what he did, and you know, he brought himself from you know the fields of sharecropping, you know, to the sky, you know, and was not just a naval aviator, which is damn near impossible. He was uh, the best naval aviator uh, at the time, and. Um, it's very rare that I do a piece and I look at a character and I go, oh, wow, I, I think I just played my hero, you know, wow. and this was definitely uh, that singular case. Does it feel different as an actor when you're playing a real person? Or at least for this one, you don't feel like you really have to imitate anything because we don't know his personality. Um, but does it feel different as an actor when you're playing a real person for you? Well, you're still trying to get the room. You know, you're still trying to get to the truth, um, but the uh, the steps are a bit different. You know, uh, with a you know a, a character, a fiction, you know, you can you, you're you're activated to use your imagination a great deal. You know, and and kind of paint that way. Um, and then when you get a character who was a living, breathing. Um, person and made real impact, you know, in a, in a life and in, in Jesse's case, history, um, it's more inspiration rather than the form of uh, imagination mm -hmm. where, you know, you look to see, okay, what, what is inspiring this person to do this? How did they, um, how are they inspiring me? You know, what, what, and then in the case of Jesse, where there was so little, you know, um, there's no recordings, you know, there were a lot of write-ups, you know, and so you, you got to look at his actions. And that in many cases is, is, I mean, as you know, just living life, you know, it doesn't matter what someone says, actually doesn't even matter what someone says about you, what you do, you know, uh, the physics of it, you know, you got from point A to point B, the things you do, you know, um, are the most important thing. And therefore you can be inspired by that. And that inspires the, uh, outline and the foundation of the character mm -hmm. for Jesse. There are some powerful moments where he's looking at himself in the mirror and he recites really <laughs> every awful racist negative thing people have said about him all his life. And he keeps a journal of, and keeps all of it written down. Mm -hmm. What was it like filming those moments? And was, you know, did that get to you at all like, filming that? Well, you want it to get to you. you yeah. Know? Uh, it has to because if it gets to me it'll get to you you know and it'll it'll touch the audience and you know move the audience and my hope was that in that moment we could take them through the same ritual that jesse was going through and a couple things are happening in the scene you know i'm going through something jesse's going through something and the audience is going through something and then there's um a fourth character which is the reflection of jesse you know that's who the scene's between. There's actually two people in the scene. There's Jesse and then there's the reflection. Um, that's why we're playing it in, in, in the mirror. Um, 
and yeah, it, it, it did get to me, but it had to. And um, primarily because, you know, if I hurt, they hurt, you know, and then if I heal, they heal, you know, um, mirror neurons, isn't it? You know, yeah. um, mirror new neurons. You know, <laughs> interesting because um, in the moment, you know, when, and when people see the picture, um, I, it's really impo- it's not important to me. I don't care how you really look at it, you know, but when you look at it in its totality, you see that the arc of it is, yeah, it's emotional and there's a breaking, but there's also a, a pretty immediate uh, rising of a phoenix that happens, you know, and there's then, and then chiefly there's an acknowledgement of it, you know, um, which then puts steel inside of him and allows him to do what he needs uh, to do, you know, uh, to continue his, his personal life mission. You know, you said something, um, you know, that he wrote down, you know, every single, th- that is not nearly every single negative, pejorative, racial, bigoted thing that's been said to him. You know, that was probably just last, that was, that, that, all of that, you know, from that moment is uh, just thinking about the context of it, you know, it's probably, I know there's a flight, there's a flight school, um, flight training uh, uh, comment in there, but the interesting part was, and the melding of the actor and the character really come together there is because uh, that, that was the, that was, what's said in the film is an improvisation of what was on the script. Mm-hmm. And I was improving from my own personal experience, mar- marrying that with uh, Jesse's experience, and again, in Texas, Mississippi, et cetera, you know, two little black boys trying to, one trying to get on the movie screen and one trying to get in the air, you know, there are some correlations, so one is a bit more ambitious, uh, to be clear, just a bit more ambitious. Um, yeah, so you have to go there, you know, and, and say things that um, do hurt, so you can actually heal, and uh, you don't shake it off, you you heal from it when it's over with. In, and in terms of like the technical aspects and being a pilot, did what sort of things did you have to learn before getting into this role? Was that all in the script for you or did you really have to go through a lot of that? I mean, we did it. I mean, Black Label, which is our uh, producers and, uh, you know, Glenn Powell is quite instrumental in it as he's a uh, uh, pilot, you know, an actual pilot, you know. Um, J.D. Dillard, who is the son of a naval aviator, you know, his father was the second black, uh, second African American um, Blue Angel, you know, which is a uh, extremely, extremely uh, prestigious and uh, skilled fleet. Um, uh, yeah, so I, you know, I, I don't like to pretend, you know, as, as little as possible, you know, and uh, they 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 set the playground up. So yeah, I got to do a lot of flight school, a lot. I got to do a, a, my share of it, you know, what was necessary and uh, had the Corsair manual, which is the uh, kind of the hero plane that you see us fly around in, in the film. And um, I memorized that, you know, to the best of my ability, studied it, you know, properly the way Jesse would have, um, the way all the 32s would have, um, and yeah, we got up in those planes, you know, and we flew and we we, we put some hours in and um, yeah, the maneuvers, I mean, the opening sequence sequence that you guys will see, like that's in camera, you know, we did that, that whole sequence wow. from takeoff to landing is in, is in camera. And that was uh, as beautiful as it is, it, it is quite intense for somebody who doesn't uh, fly planes, you know, yeah. it's, it's not your commercial Delta flight, you know, it's, uh, I mean, these things are, are. I mean, it's a miracle flight is, yeah. you, and uh, the, uh, how, how would you say that? The uh, acknowledgement of the miracle in your body is not as divine as you may think it is. I mean, there's a lot of uh, chaos that's happening, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, until, until you get used to it. We definitely dealt with that, but uh, it wasn't those moments where, you know, as, as, as crazy as I was feeling, where I felt closest to uh, Jesse you know, because that's something he would have experienced. Uh, without a doubt, he experienced that. Um, yeah, it was quite intense. Yeah. And you mentioned Glenn Powell. You have a lot of scenes with Glenn. It's, I mean, it's you too at the center of this film. Um, he plays Tom Hudbear. What was it like filming with him? Um, these two guys from, you know, completely different worlds that are coming together as yeah. naval officers and, and building this trust in, in a time where that trust was not typical. 
Well, it's um, I mean that that's like a great a great question. Um, and the trust element is something that uh is really that was for Jesse to uh, explore, right? That he couldn't trust, you know, because of what what he experienced, you know. People putting weights in this flight suit, holding them under, you know, these, these are all things that we talk about in the film, you know, uh, and, and also things that are said, are shared, rather, with uh, Tom. Um, so, yeah, we we built that relationship um, from the beginning, from the time we you know, met in a Russian Turkish bath in, in New York City, you know, and, and kind of had our chat, you know, uh, artist to artist about if if we're you know ready to do this together and uh uh, we were and the crafting of the relationship was um it was quite quite sophisticated i think i mean because we we did not want to do the standard you know 1990s or you know i mean there are films made recently that would lean into um essentially selling out you know uh and and taking the shortcut you know to this relationship they don't like each other they're best friends in the, yeah. in, in the play you know what i mean uh, when it's so much more uh, complex than that, so much more nuanced than that, which is, you know, one of the reasons the film is so relevant because, you know, race relations in America and abroad, but, you know, just speaking as an American, are so uh, precarious, you know, and, and there are so many of us that want to take shortcuts to it. And it's it's a conversation, you know, it's an ongoing conversation. And from the beginning of the film, uh, you watch Tom and Jesse engage in that. And because they're, I don't know, maybe there's something about the the crucible of just being, you know, in the Navy together, you know, and also seeing yourself in another individual that you wouldn't expect to see it in, you know. Um, it allowed us to engender a relationship that wasn't, you know, buddy-buddy, you know, but soul-to-soul. -soul. And therefore, we have a story that Yes, we touch on the friendship element and the best buddy element and you know the flyboy wingman element, but ultimately it's a story about two men who are devoted to the same thing and therefore uh find themselves uh as twin flames, as soulmates, you know, which is why we have a film, because it is the steel, sharpening steel, you know, that allows for uh a legacy to be born. And the Tom Hutner le legacy is um connected you know completely to the uh, Jesse Brown legacy and I mean that was our that was our conversation you know that was our that was our work uh to be done and, and Glenn is I mean he's just so um he's just so willing you know and just so uh open-hearted and uh curious about how how we could have done that and uh that's what we tried to do one of the scenes that hit home for me was when he was talking about they switch plane, like they get these newer planes. Yeah. And just he can't see. You have to rely on on this guy doing this to land the plane. And everyone's like, why don't you just land land the plane? And it's at that moment when he sort of lets everyone realize, like, you don't necessarily trust the guy doing this. Like, yeah. cool. who's that guy? And why should you trust him to, yeah. to land you? So yeah. I mean, what what were those scenes like to film? Yeah. Well, I mean, those were those were quite, I mean, modern scenes, you know, yeah. where you, you don't want to there's secrets, you know, there's always secrets in a in a play and in a story where you go, Oh, are we gonna talk about that? You know what I mean? Where it's like, yeah, there's I once had a drama teacher that talked about the actually a white guy, you know, who who was talking to me, his you know, for lack of a better term, his star pupil, you know. Uh this is theater, obviously, not academics. Uh, and he's you know talking to me he says you know there's this third eye you know I was doing this we did this thing in Texas it's all over the nation but uh, forensics right speech and debate and this and that and blah, blah blah I happened to participate in a uh, theatrical uh, venue right called dramatic interpretation and uh, you would go you'd be judged you would be judged is how it goes you know and you move through the rounds you do your presentation and um he spoke to me once about the third eye, you know, and I thought, the fuck are you talking about? You know, and um, maybe he shouldn't have told me, but I realized that's something I always had, you know, where you go, is this happening to me because I'm I'm talented? Or, or, or more to the case, is this happening to me because I'm black? Or is this happening to me because it is what it is? You know what I mean? And 
that was something that that's a secret you know what I mean he told me that at 14 15 years old and I'm thinking oh shit did I did I break out of this round because you know black and or did I break out of this round because I was the best you know performer in the room or you know it happens when you get pulled over my shit am I getting pulled over I'm black am I getting, you know that distrust is uh something that this country has you know laid into the psyche of you know African Americans you know um and Jesse has that. And we don't talk about that in, in cinema. We don't talk about that in films. You know, you're supposed to be stoic and, you know, trustworthy or or the baddie, baddie. You know what I mean? You don't talk about the nuance of, I don't know if they're going to try to sink my black ass. You know what I mean? I don't know if they're going to try to, you know, every time I get in the plane, I don't know if my mechanic, you know, you know, fuck my shit up. You know what I mean? Because they don't want to see a black man in the sky. You know, this is, this is a bigger country we're living in. And, and as, as, honorable and moral um and merit-based as the uh armed services are i mean them fellas them fellas come from a certain place you know uh all of us do and so you know to transcend race is uh is a hope it's not the rule can you talk about working with director jd dillard on this and what that experience was like on his set i i mean JD, I mean, there are there are scripts, and then there's director pairings where you go, oh, that's perfect, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, I've been fortunate where I think, oh yeah, you know. But then there are there are films you go, anybody could direct this. You know what I mean, anybody could direct this. You know, uh, Devotion and JD Dillard is that's a, that's a that's a match made in heaven. You know, it's a uh, it feels divine in many ways. You know, this whole this whole process has been. Uh, but it feels divine in many ways. You know, I mean, how, what are the odds that you have a capable African American director telling this story that has a huge um, African American uh, point of view? Furthermore, is dealing with the Navy. Furthermore, is dealing with naval aviation, and that individual is the son of a naval aviator and as a young man that has the energy and the spit and piss and vinegar inside of him to make a film because that's difficult yeah it's hard to make a film you know it takes it takes a great deal of energy (laughs) you know (laughs) to do that uh to lead a film uh but also to direct a film and we had that um we had that cornucopia of talents and one individual in JD and he could speak to us um, with the authority uh, that's needed, you know, for us to trust and fly, you know, Um, he and I had an extremely, and and to this day have a very uh, intimate relationship. And so far, you know, the thing about director is, I was actually speaking to a few friends of mine about this last night is, the relationship between a director and a lead actor is that of a, you know, the president and his therapist. You know what I mean? Like okay. he's got you, that actor is they've got it's on them. You know what I mean? You can't help them. Director can't. Scorsese can't get in there and do it for De Niro. You know what I mean? I got he, it. He's got to do it. You know what I mean? But he is the greatest enabler. You know, the director has to be the greatest enabler and 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 buffer you know, and guide her and, and lead her in many ways. And I mean, our relationship is so that, that it, it, it even transcends the film. You know, I ask him about, you know, should I do this magazine cover, man? What do you think? You know what I mean? Like, like we have that type of relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 I'm off course, but no, he's perfect. He was perfect for the film, you know, and perfect for uh, this group of guys, you know, he got in there and really helped us build, um, you know, helped us do the invisible work. Um, yeah, and his knowledge of aviation and what it is to be a, um, essentially an Air Force brat or, or Navy Navy brat, excuse me, um, was quite helpful, you know, because he could give insight to what it was like within those four walls of the Brown House, you know, because he'd been there. Furthermore, yeah. uh, he brought his father to work, to be a, um, a consultant. You know, so he could talk about angles of planes and 
you know, G's and, and all these things, but he could also say, you know, he wouldn't mind me saying this, you know, hey, dad, tell me again what it was like when you had to tell mom you were, you know, you were going out, you know, tell me, tell me what that was like again. And he could have that conversation in, in, in producer's village or director's village and then walk over to set, you know, which is just you know, 20 paces and a curtain away and say that and whisper that to me and, and, and Christina Jackson playing Daisy. And we would have it directly from the source. You know, there was no game. Of, there's no game of telephone with yeah. uh with uh jd um and before we go i just want to take it back a little bit because we haven't spoken to you at gold derby um since you received an emmy nomination for lovecraft country <laughs> um what's you know what was that like to just kind of get that major recognition for the first time and that, like your career is just um, awesome and you have a lot of great projects going on what was that moment like when you got that first nomination Oh man, it was like, I mean, the thing is, I was also shooting Kang at the time, you know, it was just, I mean, the, this whole thing has been so, um, it's been, but here's the thing, I feel like it's been, it's been steady, you know, I've been, where, I've been, I've been at it for, you know, I'm, I'm a young cat yet, I'm 33 years old, but yeah. I've been at it since I was, you know, 13 years old, sincerely, you know what I mean, uh, but there are moments where you go, what? You know what I mean? Like, you, know, shit. you know, and I remember watching um in the kitchen, you know, on my laptop. I was like, I'm not gonna watch, I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna watch, you know. I just had it up and I saw the you know the little my little picture come up, you know, and I went, Oh my god, this is this is literally oh my god, this is incredible. You know, I I I I can't, I'm so humbled by it, I can't believe this is happening. And you know, uh there's no way I'm gonna win, but uh, I'm so happy to be just in the number, you know. Um because it's about acknowledgement, you know, the acknowledgement of Atticus Freeman and, and Lovecraft Country uh, was so important. Yeah. You know, was important. And it was, it was a tough year too, you know, so for us to, for that, for that uh, performance and that story to push through uh, and for me to be the one, the, the, the tip of the spear, you know, in that it was, uh, it was emboldening, man. I mean, I have so much confidence in uh, art, you know, so much confidence in our uh, industry as, as hard headed as our industry can be, you know, um, I'm in, you know, and I, and I think we've really got something, there's a real, there's a real movement happening, you know, and I, and I'm happy to be a part of it. And the Emmy was the big, one of the big moments where I went, oh yeah, it's on for sure. Yeah. Well, you mentioned Kang and we've seen the Creed 3 poster. I'm not even going to ask about it because I know you can't give anything away, but Rocky three with Mr. T was my favorite one growing up. So I'm just going to assume Creed three is going to be mine as well. Um, but Jonathan, I want to thank you for talking with us about devotion today. It's out November 23rd in theaters. Um, I saw it in an early screening and I mean, it was, I, I don't even know how to describe it. The audience reaction was profound. I will say that. So congratulations on a beautiful film. Um, all of our viewers go to goldruby.com, make your Oscar predictions, SAG Awards, Golden Globes, everything else. And Jonathan, uh, best of luck. And it was a pleasure to speak with you today about devotion. Yeah, my pleasure, man. Talk to you soon. Thank you. 